With any crisis comes an opportunity and to uh, be better and think, rethink some things that we have been taking for granted. You cannot take it for granted anymore that young people get exposed to, to great art. We have to reach out, we have to do different things. I think obviously something has to be done and I, I'm totally for these new things, uh, you know. Um, for instance, uh, in Chicago, we have that series called Beyond the Score, which is quite, quite wonderful. And, uh, but there are many, many uh, concerts like that, in, uh, and I have participated to several of them. And, uh, you know, it's sold out. Because people like that, because it, it explains the, the political context or the economical context, the whole, the whole context, to explain why the music, that music it is what it is. Of course, it's exciting to imagine the use of these new media with new pieces by new composers, but there may also be illuminating ways in which these can be used uh, for earlier pieces. Certainly, uh, we are trying in New World Symphony now to regularly use kind of uh, video, vi videos that tell you things about the music as opposed to reading those in a program book mm -hmm. right. that we may produce a little feature which tells you about the music, which if there are folk songs quoted or whatnot, you actually get to hear those songs and you actually get to see some things from where the music was, uh, was written. In the case of one thing we're doing next year concerning Beethoven's Mrs. Solemnis, a piece which I really love very much and I think is a, a serious challenge for the perception of listeners because it is, there's, it is so hugely complexly written, it, it's kind of all written over itself. So I'm trying to imagine a way in which uh, uh, kind of installation which concerns uh, the, the, where the musicians actually themselves are, how it is lit, how video itself might be used in a way that mirrors the intricacies of the text to allow these sort of levels of musical thought and organization to be perceived uh, more clearly. At the root of all of this, it's not just an expansion of, of what orchestras present, but even more fundamentally, what orchestras are. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the discussion that will um, ultimately arrive at the point where people are not thinking about this kind of project done by a traditional orchestra, such as the New York Philharmonic, as being a kind of special on the side, but as something that is absolutely straight down the center of what we are about and what we can provide as orchestras. I think that orchestras can be leaders in education, can, 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 can be focal points of connections between institutions within cities. In short, I think that, that we, are, we are and should be recognized as so much more than just concert producing machines. When we use the term education, I mean it in a much broader sense. And again, it, it's about meaning. We have to give people meaning in their lives and we can do that. I believe that anyone that goes to concerts wants to get an experience which is a new one beyond what we know. And for me it has to do with many things like programming Beethoven with something more unusual than another Beethoven symphony, or always creating links, and links which are unexpected. And we have this wealth of repertoire, which is the span is 300, 400 years. It's unbelievable, and this is what a symphony orchestra now in the 21st century has that any other ensemble cannot pretend to have. Somebody my age at this point, maybe the most valuable thing I have to contribute is context because I've just lived through a lot of stuff and, and because of the nature of the kind of family I came from, I have a lot of connections that go back hundreds of years. It's, it's, it's clear to me what it meant to be a 12th century person as opposed to a 15th century person as, and, and, and trying to put the arts that come from all these areas in the context of the lives of the people who lived them is what, is what I want to do and then I want people to grab hold of some of this and spin it out in ways I can't imagine. Culture is something that we keep alive. We are uh, only keeping alive our own history as a planet Earth, as a human being. We have this which was given 
by the human genius or whether it's by spiritual help. It has been given and it is speaking to everyone, even if we're not from a purely European tradition. And we don't talk about that because maybe it's romantic, but to have access to beauty is something really important. What classical music does is to abstract, to distill the, uh, the moves of all sorts of primal music of peoples, uh, whether that's uh, hunting songs or uh, religious songs or courtship songs or this whole genres, you know, folk music, uh, religious music, and all this is both preserved by classical music, but also its moves are are condensed and abstracted and made into a, into a larger kind of observation of life itself. It's, it's this kind of testimony of what it has meant to be human and how much we as contemporary humans can learn from that. What is my real priority is to break this image that you have to be knowledgeable to go to concerts. And this is for me what keeps uh, getting me upset really sometimes when even people who enjoy the concerts, they come to me and they say, I don't know anything about music, but I enjoyed it. So, well, why do you have to apologize not knowing anything? I'm not apologizing not knowing anything about cinematography and saying if I like or dislike the movie. And for some reason, because of our image problem in concerts, of classical music, people feel that they have to be knowledgeable. And I think this is coming from musicians, from conductors, from marketing, from media, but also from critics and people who tend to write about music also somehow cultivate this a little bit. So, of course, we can do our bit and attack this head on, like you said, but we also have to lead everyone in the industry to, to think the same way. And I think it's happening. I'm an optimistic guy, so I think it's happening. <laughs>